So I'm Clarissa Murphy from Brookline Booksmith. I'm a children's bookseller there. I read for the Indies Introduced panel uh, this last season, and one of our selections was This Is Not a Werewolf Story by the lovely Sandra Evans. I was wondering about um, sort of your writing process and where some of the um, different wonderful world aspects come into your story, um, the bicycle and the tree oh, and things sure. like that that you run into, just wonderful sort of sidelined um, background pieces. Well, actually, I, I wrote this story with my son, who was nine at the time, and we were um, we were walking to school one day and for the bicycle mm -hmm. in the tree, and I said to him, Mac, we need to have some sort of... Uh, image or motif that shows growth over mm -hmm. time, and I want it to go throughout the whole story. Um, something that shows our character has changed or is being freed from some of his problems. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, oh, remember that story, how there's that bike that's stuck in an oak tree on Vashon Island, which is an island right near where we live, and he said, what if we could have that bike in there somehow, how the, the oak tree has grown into this bike over the last 40, maybe 60 years, I think. It's a really interesting story. You can just Google it. It's Vashon Island, <laughs> bike in oak. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, so, so yeah, that's what we decided. I decided I'm going to have a bike stuck in an oak tree, and it's going to be a symbol of Raoul. But then as the story evolved, it changed. So it's not yeah. quite a simple symbol of... Uh, growth or evolution, right. it really, it really isn't exactly that. But, yeah. But it is, it is there. So. Yeah. Um, so as a children's book uh, bookseller, I often run into, especially when selling middle grade, you're explaining the story to a parent, mm -hmm. and you get to the part where you say, you know, oh, the parents have died, or the parents are gone right. from the story. So I was wondering, as a parent, how you sort of felt about writing a mother figure that is kind of in the background right. of the story because right. um, it's primarily focused on father-son relationship, mm -hmm. which is really wonderful and not something that we see all the time. Um, again, that again, that was sort of something that evolved as the, as the story went on. We mm -hmm. wanted our characters, again, it was something I discussed with my son. He was tired of reading stories where the mother was dead mm -hmm. and or the dog died or like everything is just so sad and just right. unrelentingly sad. Yeah. And so I wanted, I said, yeah, but we have to have our hero have problems, and, and he has to have problems that normal kids don't always have. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way for that to happen, because most parents would not allow their child to end up in these situations, you know, right. hopefully. So, yeah. <laughs> so we have to kind of strip him of some of that support. So that's right. how we came up with this idea of what, what if the mother is missing but not totally gone? What mm -hmm. if she's present? And for me personally, I have um, friends who, who died when their kids were really young, mm -hmm. and their stories are in that story, in my mm -hmm. story too. That that story of uh, of how I, I believe you know you never leave your child no right. matter what. So, yeah, and that was for me. I always thought of those kids that I know are growing up without moms mm -hmm. um, that are, are personally you know affected by that, and I, I really wanted that to be in there too. That, that nothing is ever gone. No yeah. one can refine those. And there are places I think in the world. You know, where you can connect with nature and there's sort of this magic in nature. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, so it's a wonderful blend of, of histor like history and uh, very realistic elements, but also uh, magic. Mm -hmm. And um, so it seems to me it appeal to a wide base of readers. Mm -hmm. Did you set out to kind of incorporate those things? Or um, did that kind of organically yeah. come about talking yeah. to your son and... I have always, I mean, growing up in the Pacific Northwest and having that nature just be so much around you all the time, and there's such a, uh, the, the, the rain and the green and the water, mm -hmm. um, to me that is magical. And then also the light, light is such an important thing in the Northwest because, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you don't always get it, right? right? And so <laughs> I wanted that to be in there too, and I started, the more I researched, the more I found there's all these things that happen in nature. So um, it, it's magical, but it's natural, and there's right. this wonder in nature. Mm -hmm. And I wanted this to be a book for that kids could read in school, and um, and have it open up to all sorts of topics for teachers, yeah, so that the really teacher does. could look at it and go, well, today we can talk about DNA. Today we can talk mm -hmm. about light phenomenon in, mm -hmm. in 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 the woods, you know, yeah. and bioluminescence. And today we can talk about the Pen Cove massacre and the right. endangered species and 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 the orca mm -hmm. and, and what an incredible animal this is. And yep. so I tried to put things that I thought, and then I tried to put in like Latin and Greek words and things that I thought would be right on the curriculum for for teachers. Really, yeah. I was I was thinking of that, and for parents yeah. as well. Did a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. <laughs>